my pre-speakers, Pras and Svetlana, talked a little bit about the change that will be coming in 2024. Uh, Pras talked about generative AI, AI adoption in general, which um, is going to be a big thing. Automation and also EHG, which needs to force us for uh, different thinking. Svetlana talked about the need for strategic business partnering, and Olga, she had some statistics about the change that's coming too. So, um, the, and there's more, right? This is not an inclusive, exclusive list. Uh, there will be changes in the economy, which often really influence how we do our jobs, what's important, how we prioritize. And we can't underestimate the personal changes that will also can also influence our work life that we have to deal with. So I want to talk to you a little bit um, about how we can deal with change and what change means for our team. So if you go um, to the next page, there is always the good and the bad, right? So we have the good thing about change in my mind, it's really the excitement that comes with this. There's a newness that comes with change. It keeps us on our toes and it kind of gets us a little bit about our day to day life. So that's good. Um, it also allows us and gives us a little bit more permission for different ways of thinking. Right. Which is, again, also a very good thing here that I like about change. Um, and it, allow, it allows us to push for things we want to achieve and we have been wanting to achieve faster. Right, so these are all really good things that get me very excited about changes, but then there's also the bad. There is the uncertainty uh, that comes with change when people don't really know what's going on, um, how it's going to impact them personally. There's a distraction and when people keep thinking and thinking about what the change will do to them, what it means. Um, people might spend more time thinking about the change rather than doing their job. Uh, people might be so distracted that they might make more mistakes. They might feel lost. They're wondering where is my place in all of this? How can I add more value? Things are different now. And some also might feel a lack of ownership and control, right? Change is something that's being done to me, not something that I'm doing. And uh, I want to talk to you about some examples. Um, one in a prior job, we've been going through a lot of organizational changes. Um, we are going through transition in the organization. And I noticed at the time that my team spent a lot of time just thinking about what's going on, how will impact them. They were unhappy, they were they were very, very distracted, not super efficient. Another example I wanna to talk to you about is when we implemented a new tool, it often seems like a small thing or enhancement of the tool, but my team got really nervous about it. They were worried about uh, what the tool will do to their day to day. They lost what is familiar to them. So if we go to the next page, I want to walk you through these examples a little bit and um, what I did in these scenarios. So the first, uh, sorry, five pages. The first scenario was um, uh, on the organizational changes. So again, I was in a prior company. We've been through a big divestiture, a big transition for the team. And I really had to focus my team on pushing uh, for the change, be with me, not being uh, too distracted. So what I did, I really focused on the opportunity here, right? Like how could I double down and harvest the good things of the change and not losing the bad ones? So what I did, I first, I focused on over communicating all the steps of the way, right? Before, once we knew that I was coming, before anything really happened, I shared what I know, I shared what I don't know yet, and I also shared what I know, but I'm not allowed to say for confidentiality, legal reasons, et cetera. I noticed that just sharing where we are on the steps, as soon as I had information, took a lot of the, the guesswork out of it. It felt people like they're part of the journey um, and also allowed for less distraction because they, they didn't have to go get their own information from who they know. I shared all the information that there was, right? So they could take that information and then go back to focus on their job. I also talked to all my direct team members one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I tried to make them be allies of the cause, right? So I, I set them down for as much time it took um, and addressed their concerns, focused and tried to figure out what they might be excited about um, and then doubled down on that. And I asked them to do the same thing with their team and their direct reports. So I kind of made them allies and spokespeople for the change that we're going through. And that also gave them a little bit of ownership and control of the change. Even though there was a lot they can control, they felt like they had a say, which they did. We took their, their feedback very seriously, which is really key here. Um, there were hard decisions to be made uh, when we did the divestiture. It also came as layoffs, which is clearly a, a tricky topic. So there were two types of, of um, relationship bond breaking, right? The one was that the divestiture itself came with people leaving the company, and the other one came with layoffs in the in the what was left, so to say. 
to me, the key here was two things. A, not lie about it, right? We can tell people everything will be fine when we know layoffs are coming and move with speed. To me, there's nothing more anxiety inducing for my team members and distracting when they know layoffs are coming, but they don't know when, how much, or what. Right. So to me, really the speed there was, was key. Move fast, communicate clearly when it's done. And then they can take a breath and focus again. Another example I want to talk about is, um, that, that I've been through in a prior company with uh, systems changes. And I think that one is a really interesting one. Also now when we talk about AI and, uh, what that will do to our team's job. The system changes, I think we often underestimate the impact they have on the team. So again, in a prior company, we implemented a budget tool. And to me, that was something that was very asked for. Everybody wanted a budget tool, wanted to get off of Excel. But if once we actually did it, a lot of people were worried about um, how they will impact how they budget. Will they still have all the control that they had in Excel? Will they have the visibility? Will the tool do something that they don't know? Will there be, you know, budgeting is a big thing in FPNA. Svetlana talked about this too. Does it mean they don't really have to budget anymore? Will their job be replaced or part of their job be replaced with this tool now? So there was a much higher degree of nervousness and anxiety that I expected. And I can see a similar impact coming from the AI transition that we will see in 2024 and beyond. And uh, what my lessons learned and what I tried to pivot after I realized that there was much more um, nervousness than excitement after we actually announced that the tool will come. Um, was also here, inform the team early, how did we make the decision, what will come, give them time to familiarize, familiarize themselves with the tool, let them talk to people who have um, used this tool in the past, listen to their feedback, and really mean it. Really key is consistency. And um, the, the, we cannot just tell people, like, don't worry, you asked for it to deal with this. The fears are real. The fears are valid and we need to address them in whatever um, way they come and the other group i want to talk about is our business partners when we do change right um and svetlana talked about strategic business partner and partnering and it's so important for change we need to take our business partners with us if we even if it's something like a budget tool that might impact our business partners the last they want to see the budget they want to see the numbers how their business is doing it is so important to take them with us from day one to tell them what's coming, to explain them the rationale, address their questions, listen to their feedback, because we want them to be our allies along the way. If our teams have concerns, if our teams are not bought in, if they have any hesitations, if then our business partners come back um, to them and then advocate for the tool or whatever change we're doing, it's going to be so impactful to you as a manager of your team um, and also your business partner, right? Because they feel like they have a say uh, and they do. And we cannot ignore their voice. So in summary, so, um, when I want to talk to you about how we want to deal with change, take your teams and your business partners with you, right? Don't surpass them. Don't think everybody wants it. Everybody knows what's going on. Validate their emotions. This one is a, a big one for me. Don't just tell them it's fine. Just deal with it. Validate the fear and address it. And then collaborate on all the solutions. Thank you so much.